The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. All right, in other news, if you can't beat them, join them. Grayscale Investments is putting their Bitcoin spot ETF on the back burner in favor of launching the Future of Finance ETF, which tracks crypto-oriented companies like PayPal, Coinbase, Block, Silvergate, miners like Argo, and more. Joining us now is David Laval, Senior Managing Director and Global Head of ETFs at Grayscale Investments, a Coindesk sister company. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining us. So just before we get into this new ETF uh, and first for Grayscale that you guys have launched, why don't you just get your markets outlook? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks so much for having uh, me on today. I really appreciate it. Um, look, I'm, a, I'm an ETF guy, so I'm really not here to prognosticate about where we're going to go with crypto prices overall. But we're super excited to launch GFOF, the Grayscale Future of Finance ETF. And I wouldn't say that we're putting uh, GBTC's conversion on the back burner, but working in parallel tracks, obviously putting a lot of attention towards the GBTC conversion, but extremely excited today to be launching our first equity ETF. And we're very excited uh, to really offer a diversified product for you know our investors. Uh, hey, David. So this uh, this new ETF that you have, it, it has what you're saying there are three pillars to uh, yep. to the future of finance. So so I, how is it weighted exactly? I mean, it, there are not a lot of companies in it, correct? And so how are you weighting the, this uh, ETF? So maybe we'll start by talking about what this product is not. I think it's clearly not a Bitcoin replication product. It's not another thematic blockchain ETF. We're not, you know, putting companies in this like, you know, Tesla or other companies that are holding Bitcoin on their balance sheet. We're clearly not putting technology companies like semiconductors, which are powering, you know, some of the mining rigs. And we're certainly not putting, you know, broad based payment processors in there like Microsoft and Visa. And so when you look at some of the other products in the marketplace that we would consider to be, you know, blockchain thematic products, this is not that. This is about defining a new theme. And that new theme is the digital economy. And we're talking about the cross section of finance and technology. And we're really talking about three pillars, which is the financial foundations of the market. We're talking about technology solutions and we're talking about the digital asset infrastructure in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So this is Grayscale's first ETF product. It tracks the Bloomberg Grayscale Future of Finance Index. Is this a placeholder until a Bitcoin spot ETF sees the light of day? I wouldn't say that it's a placeholder. Again, we're running you know, and building a world-class ETF issuer, and that's going to take advantage of how nimble we are in terms of bringing products to market quickly, in addition to our ability to you know, really meet investor demand. Clearly, there's investor demand for a spot Bitcoin ETF, and clearly we're putting a lot of attention towards that. We have a filing in with the SEC that is being you know, currently reviewed and is open to public comment right now. But we see the opportunity to take advantage of you know, defining the digital economy and really offering our investors an opportunity to participate in the growth of the digital economy and participate in the opportunity for new companies to really come into the digital economy. And the way we've built this index is really built to be able to capture that growth and capture those new companies that will be, you know, coming into the marketplace over the next decade. So I'm sure your goal obviously is to attract the widest pool of investors possible, but I, this seems like there are two separate groups and I'm just curious if you think one will outweigh the other. One is just the, the investor that's already in the crypto markets and just kind of wants right. to add and, and, and add another product. And then the other are the people that are really nervous about investing directly into crypto because of fears of volatility and might be more attracted to this kind of ETF. Do you think one of those groups will, will, will be more, will just, will, will, will you'll have more of one of those groups than the other? So I actually think the beauty of this product is it really attracts all. I think thematic investing and the growth of thematic ETFs have been historically something that has been attractive to retail investors and financial advisors for allocations to their clients' portfolios. When you start thinking about you know, cloud computing in 2012, robotics and automation in 2013, 5G, at the time that those products were coming to market, they weren't really well-defined themes. And, and so this is another example of a new theme, a cutting edge theme, a, a bleeding edge theme coming to market where we're really going to capture the future of what this will be defined as. And thematic investing in ETFs has shifted over time. Initially, as I mentioned, financial advisors and retail self-directed retail investors were attracted. But as the theme has you know, grown and the theme has really become defined in popularity, 
it's become an institutional opportunity for investment. If you think about cloud computing in 2012, AWS was less than 2% of you know, Amazon's revenues at that point in time. And now we all know that it's more than half of their revenues. And so at that point in time, you know, the theme uh, in, in cloud computing more generally really hadn't been well-defined. I think this is another opportunity. Grayscale's future of finance ETF is going to define the digital economy and then also offer an opportunity for a very broad range of investors. Yeah, point, point well taken. Um, I guess just one question is that, you know, one of the reasons that some people are uncertain about investing directly into crypto is the roller coaster like volatility. Do you think sure. this ETF will offer any kind of hedge against that? I don't know if it'll be a hedge against volatility, but what it will be is it'll be the opportunity for investors to really, you know, get into the infrastructure of the digital economy and, you know, not investing directly into the assets themselves and not directly directly investing into an ETF that is built to replicate the performance of Bitcoin and other digital assets. And so as this digital economy grows, as the you know, more and more companies that are you know, currently adjacent to the digital asset infrastructure or adjacent to the digital asset market really become you know, incorporated and intertwined into the digital economy, this product will capture that. And so regardless of the regulatory headwinds, the volatility in the marketplace, this product is really going to do a good job of offering investors um, a very nice growth opportunity in the market. So Dave, the uh, GBTC discount, we, we got to talk about it. It's now at about sure. 25%. The carry trade is pretty much dead. So I, the market seems to be saying, give up on the idea of this ever becoming an ETF. We all hope for a messianic age, but at the same time, we got to be realists. How far out do you think, in realistic terms, how far out do you think it'll be before you're going to get an approval on turning that into an ETF? Or do you think you just got to wait for Gensler to leave? <laughs> Well, look, we're we're actively engaged with the SEC. We're within our 240-day um, you know clock that the SEC has for these types of filings. Uh, we have an open comment period with the SEC, and we're waiting for you know early July when that 240-day clock expires for the SEC to make um, you know a final ruling. We feel really strong about the case we've made, and we still stand true to the point that if there's you know an ability for a Bitcoin futures ETF to be in the marketplace, we believe. That it's you know perfectly reasonable to approve a spot bitcoin etf as well you know the sec has just issued a notice to bitwise to address concerns about their proposed spot bitcoin etf particularly they wanted them to address concerns over fraud as well as uh, manipulation I, I wonder if, if you were to address the sec about those concerns what would you say yeah, so the surveillance agreements and, you know, broad-based manipulation, you know, when we take a look at the products that are currently approved in the marketplace and we take a look at the product, our, our product, the underpinning of the index, um, you know, there's very similar, um, you know, exposures and very similar pricing mechanisms. And so any concerns that the SEC has raised around manipulation, around maturity of the market or around, you know, surveillance agreements, we feel like they have gotten comfortable with the Bitcoin futures products that are in the marketplace. And given the similarities between our products and given the similarities in the pricing mechanisms associated with it, we believe they should be comfortable with uh, the way our product is structured. 